This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. Today, President Biden made his first trip to Maine since taking office. Our A.J. Douglas joins us now live in studio with a recap of the president's visit. A.J. Thanks, Peter. President Biden discussed the state of inflation, rising job numbers, and he, how he plans to solve a problem that plagues not only Maine, but the rural communities across the nation. In two years, I've cut the national debt by one trillion seven hundred billion dollars while doing all of this. While doing all of this. One trillion seven hundred billion dollars. Friday, President Biden was greeted by the governor and those in the manufacturing industry during his visit to Auburn Manufacturing, Inc., where he highlighted how American Rescue Plan Act funds are being used to revitalize Maine's local mills. The president took to the stage to reflect on how the loss of a major economic hub can devastate a community. Factories got shut down all over the country. Parents saying to the children, honey, I'm sorry, I lost my job. We can't live here anymore. You saw it here in Maine. Let me remind you of a few examples. Auburn and Lewistown, right next door, used to be home for some of the country's largest textile mills. Governor Mills released a statement saying in part, quote, Maine's unemployment rate is at a record low. We have a near record high number of jobs and our GDP has grown at one of the best rates in the nation. New businesses are coming to Maine and existing businesses are expanding, in part, quote. During Biden's visit, he signed a executive order, Invest Here, Make It Here, which aims to support people working in the U.S. by increasing job availability and encouraging investors to expand here in the U.S. The executive order, federal research and development in support of domestic manufacturing in the United States, which means more jobs. <laughs> Maine GOP chairman and Air Force veteran Joel Steckes sent out a statement responding to the president's visit. Steckes said, quote, Bidenomics have failed. China is eating his lunch and Joe Biden should be embarrassed coming to Maine after the assault on our lobstermen. If he had any shame, the taxpayers cost of the campaign trip would have been donated to helping Maine seniors afford the Biden price hike on their heating oil this winter. End quote. In studio, I'm A.J. Douglas. Back to you, Pete. All right, AJ, thank you. Meanwhile, a Hancock man charged in a fatal hit and run in Southwest Harbor made his initial court appearance today. Our Matthew Jaroncic has that story. 31 year old John Holdsworth appeared at Hancock County District Court after being arrested in connection with a fatal hit and run incident, killing 35 year old Amber Robbins of Tremont. In a statement from Public Information Officer Shannon Moss, Maine State Police Major Crimes Unit received an arrest warrant for Holdsworth Wednesday, charging him with the crime of manslaughter. He was arrested and transported to Hancock County Jail the following day. If found guilty, the Hancock native could serve up to 30 years in jail. Talking bail, Hancock County Assistant District Attorney Carly Rieger asked for $35,000 cash. She said the high bail warrants the fact Holdsworth was allegedly trying to cover up what happened. Defense attorney Robert Van Horn argued the defendant cooperated with police following what he learned on social media about the incident. According to the affidavit we obtained, Holtzworth was at a birthday party at MDI Lobster the night of the alleged incident. Leaving the party at 11 p.m., he received a text message from his wife. Taking his eyes off the road for a moment, he said he felt his truck impacted something, claiming it was a deer. The affidavit goes on to say the defendant noticed on Facebook the following day a body located in a ditch along U.S. Route 102 in Southwest Harbor. Recognizing he drove through that exact location and struck something, Holtzworth called police, saying it was the right thing to do. Hearing what both sides had to say, the judge on the case decided on a $10,000 cash bail. Holtzworth was also ordered to not have any contact with any of the other defendants and has a curfew of 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. unless deemed necessary. Members of Holdsworth's family were in attendance at the hearing. Holdsworth will be back at Hancock County District Court on November 16th for a depositional hearing. In Ellsworth, Matthew Jaroncic, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. 
Ellsworth police have arrested a man in connection with a stabbing that happened early this morning. Officers responded to a 911 call in the woods behind 225 High Street. When they arrived, they found a woman at a campsite who'd been stabbed in the upper thigh and had cuts on her hands. She was taken to a local hospital by ambulance. Ellsworth police officers arrested 49-year-old Jonathan Haywood, who is a transient. Police say he allegedly stabbed the woman during a sexual encounter. Haywood is charged with aggravated assault and reckless conduct. Meanwhile, Brewer police de-escalated what they're calling a, quote, potential hostage situation last night. According to Brewer Police Chief Jason Moffitt, at around 5 p.m., officers received a tip that a person was being held against their will on Black Bear Road in Brewer. Police say threats were allegedly made to the victim. The incident was reportedly resolved in around 20 minutes. Officers uh, treated it as a potential hostage situation, and uh, when they arrived, they, they were eventually able to get one of the, uh, you know, the potential victim out of the home to talk to him. 27-year-old Michael May ultimately surrendered himself to police. May was arrested and charged with domestic terrorizing. A person riding a bicycle was taken to the hospital after being hit by a car in Bar Harbor this morning. It happened on Route 102 a little after 9.30. Bar Harbor police say Trevor Alley of Otter Creek was driving the Ford Escape that hit the bicycle. A 66-year-old man from Mount Desert was riding that bike. There's no word on his condition at this time. Police say the crash is being reconstructed and the investigation is ongoing. One person was seriously injured when the tractor trailer they were driving crashed earlier today. According to the Department of Public Safety, a tractor trailer hauling wood chips crashed on Dover Road in Charleston around 1130 this morning. During their investigation, state police determined the driver, 71-year-old Paul Jackson of Dover Foxcroft, likely experienced a medical event which caused the truck to go off the road. Witnesses told police they never saw the brake lights turn on during the crash. Jackson was transported to Eastern Maine Medical Center in Bangor with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. The crash remains under investigation. U.S. Marshals in Maine are warning about recent phone scams. They say the scammers claim they're U.S. Marshals or other federal officials. During the calls, the scammers spoof actual phone numbers to the U.S. Marshals office, attempting to get people to pay money. They say if you don't send them the money, you'll suffer legal consequences. A statement from the Marshals Service says the scammers may use convincing information like old residential addresses and phone numbers, but they urge the public to be vigilant. They say to call the agency in question and verify that they're the ones contacting you. The U.S. Marshals Service will also never ask for wire transfers, credit card information, or bank routing numbers. They say you should never give out your personal or financial information to unknown callers and report scam calls to your local FBI office. Governor Janet Mills signed a bill into law aimed at improving school bus safety. LD-62 requires anti-pinch sensors to be installed in all new school buses starting in 2025. A student from Auburn and another from Buxton were both caught in their school bus doors in 2022, placing them in dangerous situations. Anti-pinch sensors can help prevent these types of accidents by stopping doors from closing with a child caught in them. The law will take effect in October. Well, today, many people were finding ways to beat the heat. The city of Augusta thought ahead to help residents do just that. In preparation for the sweltering heat and humidity, a daytime cooling center was opened today at the Bucher Community Center. For anyone that needed to cool down, it was a welcome sight. The city also has other resources available. For further assistance, you can always call 211. So glad to see that people were keeping an eye and on the weather out there and uh, taking efforts to cool off. Hopefully things are going to cool off out there for us soon. And with a first look at our forecast, we'll turn things over now to Jeff Weller. All right, thank you. We made it. The last weekend of July is here. We cranked up the heat today with high temperatures up near 90. Tomorrow is going to be a bit cooler, though, as some rain showers are on the way. Of course, lots of heat across the Midwest. We got a taste of this today with high temperatures back up in the upper 80s to low 90s. Overall, though, here comes some more rain showers in the forecast. A gorgeous day all day, but now the clouds are increasing out there and we'll likely get a couple of showers around the area tomorrow. It will not be an all-day rain. I wouldn't cancel your plans tomorrow. 
just know there will be a couple of showers around tomorrow, primarily afternoon into tomorrow night. Our forecast, though, for tonight, though, is increasing clouds out there. Still muggy and humid with low temperatures down near 70. Your full forecast is coming up. All right, so staying warm for us overnight. Thank you, Jeff. It's still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, our Doug Banks got out on the water today to learn a thing or two about paddle boarding and being safe while doing so. And a boat towing service in Stockton Springs has a new owner after the passing of the former captain. We'll have those stories and much more as ABC 7 News at 6 comes right back. Update your outdoor living space and make the most of your outdoor life with a new deck from Hammond Lumber Company. From wood to low maintenance composite and PVC decking, Hammond has the materials, knowledge and experience to help you get everything you need for that perfect new deck. Railing options include wood, composite, aluminum and the modern look of cable railing. Your Hammond sales rep can answer any questions and will walk you through your options. Get the deck you want, the one you deserve, when you bring your vision to Hammond Lumber Company. Dave's Auto Repair and Towing is now in two locations in Bucksport and Ellsworth, providing honest and professional automotive repair and maintenance services. As a family-owned, certified Napa Auto Care Center, Dave's Auto Repair and Towing will take care of your air conditioning, axle repair and replacement, brakes, engine repair, exhaust systems, oil changes, preventive maintenance, and radiator service. And Dave's also offers a large and affordable selection of tires and 24-hour towing service. Dave's Auto Repair and Towing in Bucksport and Ellsworth. Hi folks, this is Barry Gass of Gas Horse Supply and Western Wear in Orono. We've been in business since 1911, and our third generation family owned business can't wait to show you our unique line of Western Wear and Western Tack. We have Western boots, shirts, hats, belts, and buckles for the entire family. And Western Tack, from bridles to saddles and everything in between for your horse. Gas Horse Supply and Western Wear, where the American West comes alive in Maine. This is not just laundry. This is laundry that's one and done. This is the ultra-fast combo laundry machine that does both washing and drying cycles. This is revolutionizing laundry. This is GE Profile. Available now at your local at-home furniture appliance and bedding location located in Lincoln and Dover Foxcroft. Stop in today and see what we can do to make you feel at home. Watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back. Paddle boarding is becoming an increasingly popular way to get out on the water and unwind. But like any water sport, it comes with its dangers. Our Doug Banks spoke with an instructor to learn more. You know that. Sign some paperwork, but don't, don't hurt yourself. <laughs> Whether you're an expert or beginner, Getting out on the water is more than jumping in. Being safe takes some planning ahead. And New England Adventure Sports is here to help. As a business, providing water sports to be well-rounded, um, not only to offer a variety of products, but also um, to have the knowledge and skills to, to work in those different, different activities. As a registered Maine guide and over 20 years of experience, Mead knows firsthand the dangers involved when stepping away from dry land. One of the many suggestions Mead has is to make sure you wear the leash attached to the board. The leashes, so there's been deaths with paddle boarding where they're like a mile offshore and they've fallen off the board and the wind, because of the fin, it was just going to straight line, the wind will take the board. For first timers and those experienced, it's important to remember two things. One, if you have the choice, don't wear dress clothes. Second, but most importantly, wear a life jacket. Seek help or help yourself. Um, you know, time is important with instances in the water. You know, if you have a problem in the water, time is everything. So the more time you can give yourself to recover or get help, you know, these, these will give you a lot more time. Knowing every second counts in a water emergency, having a plan first will make sure the fun and adventure is a great memory. 
In Dover Foxcroft, Doug Banks, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Just a beautiful day to be out there on the water. Meanwhile, a boat towing service in Stockton Springs has a new owner after the passing of its former captain. Our David Ledford spoke with the man, spoke with him about taking up the helm and carrying on the legacy of the business. Captain Darren Shute is a 25-year lobsterman, a lifetime electrician, and now the captain of the long-standing Stockton Springs boat towing service, the towboat Castine. The boat operates as a response vessel for boats up to 25 miles offshore, providing on-the-water towing services, battery jumps, fuel drop-offs, and more. A Stockton Springs native, Shute says he's happy to serve the community he knows so well. I've lived here almost all my life. I've spent a few years uh, in other places, but we're back here to stay and it's a great town it's fully committed to to the people shoot purchased the business from the estate of the former owner and captain bill stevenson a beloved figure in the community who passed away last year shoot says he's humbled to carry on the legacy of his friend i knew bill uh, quite well bill was a, a good man boy he had a big hat it was just a, a great honor to follow in his footsteps and, and really want to thank his family for for thinking of me shoot says he's only been on the job for a few months but he's already seen an outpouring of support from the town when people are so grateful and happy and say gee thank you so much we really appreciate the extra care and that you took with us that's gratitude is uh is worth a lot it's a wonderful community. We've got a lot of community spirit here, and it's, it's like a big family. Wherever you're from, we'll try to treat you like family, too. Whatever you may need on the water, Shute says he'll be there. Give us a call. We're a 24-7 business, 207-322-5693. In Stockton Springs, David Ledford, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. And still to come on ABC 7 News at 6, the state capitol gets ready to host an Ironman triathlon. We'll take you there. And in sports, Maine women's basketball summer practices are underway. How new and returning faces are causing optimism. We'll have that story right after the break. Harris Lumber is locally owned and has been serving the Penquist region for more than 50 years. See them for all your projects, big or small. Customer service is their number one priority. And with a full line of lumber and hardware items, they can also deliver to your job site. Harris Lumber, Milo. At Hashi's Auto Enhancing, our focus is on the appearance, longevity, and value of your vehicle. Does your undercarriage look like this? You can go from this to this. And if you have a new vehicle, you can avoid this. Our annual undercoating service will add years of life to your vehicle. At Hashi's, we also do rhino linings. We can rhino rocker panels, bumpers, trailers, side-by-sides, and more. We take pride in making your ride shine inside and out. Book one of our detailing packages. Bring your ride to us to protect your investment. Maine is a one-of-a-kind beautiful state, and there's no better way to see it than from the air. Fletcher Mountain Aviation offers an aerial experience like no other, featuring seaplane flights where you will see the best views in Maine from the air and land on Maine's most beautiful lakes. An experience you will never forget, with views from the northern Maine woods, Moosehead Lake, and Katahdin regions. Come fly and see our beautiful state from the sky with Fletcher Mountain Aviation. Visit our website here or scan the QR code to book your flight today. Scooty Can Bloom, a full-service, custom-designed florist, Main Street in Winter Harbor. We can deliver one-of-a-kind, full-color flower arrangements by custom floral designer, me, Pam. Delivering to Ellsworth and surrounding areas for any occasion. Please visit ScootyCanBloom.com or call 844-SCOOTIC. Some things are worth waiting for. Something reliable. Something loyal. Something long-lasting. A six-year warranty? Coyote's got that. One machine for all the dirty work? Count on Coyote. Coyote won't break your heart, and Whittemore and Sons got the deals that won't break the bank. So quit swiping and settling for less. Slide into Whittemore and Sons and be treated like family, by a family who cares. 257 Waterville Road, 
Scowhegan. Tonight's sports is brought to you by Dirt Road Acres, your number one dispensary, providing outstanding customer service and award-winning knowledge at the most affordable prices. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. We are going to start up in Orono. Maine women's basketball summer practices are underway with a new local star and a load of big-time players coming back. Our Ryan Sudal reports there's already optimism up in the pit. It feels great. Uh, it was nice to have uh, everyone who is here um, together. Break out those industrial fans. Maine women's basketball is back on the court for summer practices. I'm excited. I'm glad to be back. Everyone's pretty much back right now. We're just missing about three people, and I'm excited for the new talent that we have. Three freshmen joined the fray in Orno this year, including point guard and former Bangor High School superstar, Emmy Streams. It's always awesome when you have someone from Maine who wants to play at Maine. She's come in and just done a fantastic job so far this summer. Everyone I met has been so welcoming. All of the returners really want to help us understand it quicker, but I think we're all learning it at a good pace. Speaking of returners, after being limited by injuries these past two years, guard Annika Halen is back and is helping fill a hole the team struggled with over that span. Defensively, that was something we lacked. Her defensive presence is really big, and I'm glad to have that back. And offensively, she's a great shooter from the corner. I'm really excited. It's been going well, just getting back into it. It's really fun to be with the girls again. Ad reigning America East Player of the Year, Addie Smith, plus former Player of the Year, Ann Simon, and the Black Bears feel pretty good about their prospects in conference. The goal is to win a championship, and with five returners coming back, it's pretty good. So I think we have a pretty good chance of winning. But before that, the Black Bears face an intense non-conference schedule with opponents like Harvard and Indiana. Mastering the little things now will prove crucial come November. Oh, it's really important that everyone's like listening and really learning fast because we don't have that much time until it's really going to hit us. It's really important to stay focused and just like try to learn as fast as you can. And by the looks of things, it seems to be going pretty well. We have a better grasp of things. Everyone else knows their role from last year. The freshmen are picking up things really quick, so I feel like we have a lot of confidence, and that'll continue when we start playing. In Orono, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. Thanks for that, Ryan. Looking forward for a hoop season right around the corner. Let's move on to some baseball now. One week ago, Trevor Story and Corey Kluber making rehab starts down in Portland. And a little bit further down in Worcester, Chris Sale is nearly ready to go for his. Sale at Polar Park this week after being placed on the 60-day injured list earlier in the season with a left shoulder injury. He threw a live simulated inning on Thursday and made it through without any issues. The reports are that he could begin a rehab assignment next week with the Worcester Red Sox and would only need one or two starts before coming back up to the majors. And he says when he's called up, he's open for any role, whether that be starting, opening, coming out of the bullpen. Sale is 5-2 and two on the season in nine starts with an ERA of 4.58. So Chris Sale and Trevor Story would be some pretty nice trade deadline acquisitions for the Sox. That's all the time we have for sports right now. Here's Jeff Weller with your full five-day forecast. Jeff? All right, thank you. Happy Friday. Your full weather is brought to you by Varney Ford, the nice car and truck people. Let's start here. The air quality is not great across the region today. It's humid, it's muggy, it's hot out there, uh, but this will get fixed tomorrow as much better air quality is on the way for tomorrow as a cold front is on the way as well. That will hold temperatures back just a bit tomorrow. Uh, but today, though, back up in the upper 80s to low 90s across our area. This will not so much be the case tomorrow, though, as a cold front is on the way with some showers out there that could bring us some cooler temperatures tomorrow and, of course, for Sunday and Monday. Right now, the wind is all over the place, right? Out of the south, southeast, out of the west, out of the north. Uh, this will come out of the northwest later on tonight as that front comes through and then overall kind of keep things quiet tonight before some rain gets in here tomorrow. There will be some dense fog, though. So if you're driving again, 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning, you know the routine. Some dense fog out there. Be careful driving later on tonight. Okay, radar picture shows what's going on. So all day today. Very nice conditions. A couple of clouds out there. Who cares, though? Uh, but there are more clouds on the way. So for tonight, we'll call it increasing clouds. There is a rogue chance for a sprinkle. Most of us will stay dry tonight. And tomorrow, though, there are a couple showers back in the forecast as all of this begins to move our direction. There's a bit behind that as well. The actual low is kind of back over here, moving in our direction. So tomorrow, off and on showers, primarily afternoon, probably more so tomorrow evening into tomorrow night around here. 
It will not be an all-day rain. Please do not cancel your plans tomorrow. Future cash showed the story. So for tonight, here we are about 10 o'clock or so, looking at a couple of showers around again, mostly likely north and west of the Bangor area tonight. That quickly goes through for tomorrow, then. This front's going to be in the area. So here's tomorrow morning, looking pretty good at 5 a.m., but there could be a rogue shower at any given time. A better chance gets in here, though, tomorrow evening. I know it doesn't show early on here, but look for increasing clouds tomorrow night with a couple of showers and thunderstorms around for that pushes through, cleans out the air quality, and then Sunday, we are left with a very, very, very nice day on Sunday. So again, this will not be an all-day rain tomorrow, uh, but just know there could be a couple of showers around. We're looking pretty good with that, most likely afternoon into tomorrow night. Again, it will not be an all-day rain. Our forecast then tonight, though, is increasing clouds out there, low temperatures down near a muggy 67 with a southwest breeze around 5 for tomorrow. Okay, so afternoon showers and a couple of thunderstorms in there again, about 30% coverage on these. Most of us will stay dry. Noticeably cooler though, not cold, but cooler with high temperatures up near 80 and a north breeze around five. And then looking ahead, your five day forecast shows even cooler on Sunday. Lots of sunshine. And then look what happens. We haven't done this for a while. Dry Sunday, Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday with plenty of sunshine. All right, it's so looking like a beautiful start to next week. Thank you, Jeff. And still more stories to come after the break. Stay with us. During Renewal by Anderson's 4th of July sale, get incredible savings on the most trusted family of window and patio door brands in America. Call for your free window diagnosis and begin your Renewal by Anderson signature service experience. A unique start-to-finish home improvement solution, skillfully guided by Renewal by Anderson professionals. Our 4th of July sale is going on right now, but it won't last. Act now, because these incredible 4th of July savings on our exclusive composite fabrics material windows end soon. Renewal by Anderson, the better way to a better window. Finding the right vehicle for you and your family can be a daunting task. At Varney Buick GMC, our expert staff is here to make the journey as painless as possible. Our goal is to get you and your family in a vehicle that will best fit into your lifestyle. Communication is key, and our team makes sure to be completely transparent throughout the process, informing you on all of your options. Come experience Varney value only at Varney Buick GMC. Established in 1925, Bangor Floral has been a premier provider of beautiful floral arrangements and thoughtful gifts for almost 100 years. Whatever the occasion, our premium collection of colorful blooms, blossoming plants, and gift baskets have warmed hearts for generations. We strongly support the Buy Local movement, purchasing directly from local farms and growers, and we are committed to the preservation of our environment. Bangor Floral, located at 332 Harlow Street. Stop in today to experience a flower shop like no other. Cool nights start with Ashley this summer with Tempur-Pedic mattresses starting at $37 per month, Beautyrest Black starting at $45 per month, and Purple starting at $39 per month. Plus pay 0% interest for 60 months in-store only, only at Ashley. Are you looking at buying a house and would like financing options through the Maine State Housing Authority? Stearns Farm Subdivision on Main Road North in Hamden has 32 houses for sale, which have two bedrooms, one bathroom, and a one-car garage for a combined total of 1,400 square feet. In order to qualify for financing, you will need to meet the criteria of the Maine Housing Authority and have a household income of less than $97,900. Please reach out to David Smallwood for more information. 949-3506. Tonight, with hot weather alerts and multiple records broken coast to coast. I don't know anybody who honestly believes climate change is not a serious problem. Is this heat a preview of the future? More Americans turn to the most watched program on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Welcome back. If you're heading to Augusta this weekend, you may have a hard time finding a hotel room or a table for dinner, and that's because Iron Man is in town. Not Robert Downey Jr., that is the Iron Man 70.3 Maine. It marks the second year in a row that the capital city has hosted the Iron Man Triathlon. Organizers say last year's event brought a $2.6 million boost to the local economy. And this year, with 500 additional applicants, they expect to do even better. Hotels are full, not just in Augusta, but it expands out to Waterville, Brunswick, Topson, Lewiston, the whole state, really, because people are, you know, bringing this in and they're bringing their families with them. It's turning into their summer family vacation. The restaurants are packed. It's great. The event kicks off at 6 a.m. Sunday morning. There will be some road closures during the race, so a heads up for travelers there. 
But between now and then, it means big bucks for the main economy. We wish good luck to all the participants in this year's race. And finally tonight, New Hampshire resident Robert Addy was celebrating his birthday on the ocean with his three daughters and captured video of something so rare that even marine scientists say they're jealous. Three humpback whales leaping from the water in near perfect unison. Just incredible. Addy says he was trying to film some humpback whales about 300 yards from their boat and was not having any luck until he got what he called a whale ballet. To add to the thrill, seconds after the three whales breached and twisted through the air, a juvenile whale did the same thing. Whale experts later told Addy that the aerial maneuvers may have been an attempt to remove parasites or aid digestion. Very interesting. Addy has another theory, however, though. He says, quote, I have a feeling that maybe they were teaching or training the younger whale. A lot to think about there, but still just an incredible sight to see. Very cool he caught that on camera. All right, well, that's going to do it for us tonight. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great rest of your evening. We'll be right back here at 11.